Very enduring something something bit animation. I don't know why it didn't come up. I just set it back to 100. Did it not? I might need to refresh my Streamlabs bits. No, it says it's at 100. Test it out. Yeah, it still looks like it's a little bit like I think that animation just needs to be downscaled on the resolution, but I have to have the person that made it for me do that. All right, anywho, um, we are playing some White, Red, Enduring Ideal today. Enduring Ideal is something that we've played in the past on stream before. This build is a few cards different than the blue whitelist that we've played on, on my website. So uh, some of the things to note in here are that we've got a full four copies of Porphyrino to the main, which I actually kind of like. One of the things that kills this deck in my experience is faster decks that get under it with creatures. So poor free notes does a good job of like helping you keep some of those creatures off the board while you get set up. And then we've got some suppression fields and rune halos and stuff like that. So this is a prison combo deck of sorts. Let's dive in and uh, see how it goes. Well, I'm back, wannabe Kurt. I, my stomach has stopped revolting from whatever I ate. Tuesday night, which is nice. My back is still a little twingy, but it's definitely bearable. Drop of honey is very reasonable. Yeah, there's no no solemnity in this list is an interesting decision. I've definitely locked people with unlife solemnity before. Hey, what's going on, Chase Clark? I don't know why my alert is not working. Let's try and reload it. It worked for what's it called? It worked for the uh Yeah, most of your hands that involve Lotus Bloom in the opener are like snap keep, so this is definitely one we're keeping. Love the content. Well, thank you for the bits, Chase Clark. Sorry the sorry the Jester animation didn't pop up. Yeah, I just I just I just refreshed my browser source just in case that was it. My Streamlabs claims it's set back to one hundred. What's going on, Bapos? So Ghostly Prison, I talked about um, poor free nodes. Ghostly Prison is another way we kind of keep creatures off our back to prevent us from dying early. Opponent Mulligan to four and seems to not have a land on one. Welcome to Magic. Enjoy your stay. Suppression Field's a pretty good one. Well, you know, if our opponent ever draws a land. This card makes activated abilities cost two more, which includes fetch lands in Modern, which is nice. Oh, they're playing Dredge. Got it. When standard? Standard starts somewhere between uh, eleven thirty and noon. So we do we do two Magic Online leagues. Yeah, it might even be a little bit earlier. The Pact Si league's probably going to be pretty quick. Kikoro, thanks for the four month three sub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me employed here. We'll always we'll always be the standard by noon on on weekdays. Sometimes sometimes we'll start before. God on Pyrobankus. Uh, Ghostly Prison looking like it's about to be very good here. If we can get the Ghostly Prison into play, we then just need to worry about not dying to Conflagrate and Creeping Chill, which is nice. Uh, Pact SI stands for Pact Spanish Inquisition. Shock that in and get this uh, Ghostly Prison into play here. I did see the new Kaya. Interesting to see a Planeswalker as a as a sideboard card, basically. There's no, there's no Inquisitions of Kozilek in that archetype. Uh, 
All right, that's an overwhelming splendor. So we're kind of just... Do I even play the Porphyry Note? The Porphyry Note doesn't really matter at this point, right? Because I have Ghost Sleepers in. I don't think I want to cast any of these other bigger cards off my Lotus Bloom. I think I want to just, like, hang tight for the time being. It's actually a really interesting idea, Angel. If there was an Inketfit Angel said, here's a mulligan idea. You start with 10 cards, and then you choose the you choose three, and then get rid of them and just keep seven. It's a neat idea. It would still create non-games where players would have unkeepable hands, but we have that under the current mulligan system too, so... Actually, it's actually a really neat concept. I like that a lot. Hey, Misfit Mavis, thank you for all the great content. Top 8 of my first PPTQ. Watching your standard match definitely helped. Thanks for the biddies. And congrats on your success. Which uh, which deck did you play, Misfit? Alright, there's there's Enduring Ideal. I guess I should... I guess I should play... Maybe I should have done this last turn too. I guess I should be playing these things out so that way I could get my Devotion to White up for this Nekthos Shrine to Nex. That's probably what I should be doing. They need, I do need one more mana here to cast Enduring Ideal. Happy New Year, Energy. Thanks for the three months. I appreciate it. Welcome back. Selesnia token, splashing black for six drop Vraska. Sounds hot. To be fair, Cheesy Pie Gaming, there were, if you go back and look at people who are terrified of change, there were people who swore up and down that adding the scry rule that we have now is going to make combo decks too good in Modern Legacy. Hey, Nadoria, thanks for the four month resub. I appreciate the third of a year. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me employed here. All right. Well, let's uh, let's cast this enduring ideal, shall we? So, the first thing on our course of action here, I think, is go ahead and grab a copy of Sphere of Safety. Safety dance. Safety dance. Do do do. Do do do. Safety dance. Do do do. So, Sphere of Safety for those not familiar. They have to pay X for each of the creatures to attack me, which X is the number of enchantments I control. So it currently costs them six mana for each creature they want to attack with between Ghostly Prison and Sphere of Safety. And then uh, next turn, the way these epic spells work is I get to cast a copy of Enduring Ideal every upkeep now. So this Enduring Ideal is going to get cast again next turn. I'm going to go get Leyline of Sanctity, which will prevent them from casting Conflagrate at me. Mike Mind, may the ideals of Hoglandia endure another 10 months. Thank you for the 10-month resub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Hey, Anner, good morning. Christy and I found out yesterday that uh, our uh, the bank that we applied for a mortgage with decided that I do, in fact, have a job that will get us a mortgage, so... We will we will be closing on a new house next uh, next Thursday, which is exciting. So, it's on my schedule, but I will be off next Thursday. <clears throat> so once I put the ley line into play here. They should be pretty locked out, especially once I get another Sphere of Safety. Oh, 
So that was three or four bathrooms. Uh, there's three bathrooms. Three? No, it might be. There's two. No, it's definitely four. There's one in the basement because the basement's finished. And there's one in there's four. Four bathrooms. I, gr growing up, I grew up in a house um, with uh, five people in it. And we only had one shower growing up, and I can't, I just can't ever imagine like having having one one shower with four four people or five people again. It took forever to get through people showers in the morning. So the one thing you have to understand is that like I live in um, I live in central Illinois, which is like there's the town where I live that has like a hundred thousand people in it. But then like surrounding us is like is like nothing. So like land and large houses are very very cheap where i live like very very inexpensive especially in relation to larger cities like chicago and basically any major city compared to here is just like it's comical how how cheap housing and land is here so the rest in pieces are definitely easy in here Yeah, like, like for reference, my my current house that I live in now that's like 45 years old has three bathrooms in it. Like, in, and this house, when we sell it, is going to be very not, not, it's not, it's not worth a lot of money. Is Oromancy? Yeah, Oromancy probably almost always boards in, right? Because these decks have more, have ways to destroy enchantments post-board, and this protects our enchantments. It's one of, one of the upsides to living in basically the middle of nowhere is that space is cheap. I am not too large into football myself, so I'm not sure what the what the sports sports uh, stuff like is in, in my area is like in my area. Blood Moon is not really a free game in this matchup. It locks them out of casting life from the loam, but I don't think I really care if they're casting life from the loam. Yeah, like, like for comparison's sake, even like the house that I live in now is like twice the size of the house that I grew up in in the Chicago suburbs. But like this house is worth less money than the house that I grew up in, in the Chicago suburbs, just because of the location. Like location, location is is everything with real estate. A four thousand square foot house. Yep. It was funny. We actually we actually looked at some things and like I remember we looked at one house that was in our price range and it was like five thousand square feet and we like walked out of it and we we're like there's just too much space here we wouldn't want to heat it like it was like really obnoxious just how some some of the things are in this area. Um, this seemed good enough. Like ghostly prisons like decent in this matchup. It doesn't have a ley line in it though, and it doesn't have a Lotus Bloom, but I think this is keepable. Like Dub Dub's Ghostly Prison is pretty good in this matchup. Yeah, right? How do you even find that much furniture exactly? I mean, the double nix is like kind of a mulligan. Like at some point, this is going to turn into extra mana for us, most likely. Like one of these, one of these is a lotus petal, basically. Post board, I expect the opponent to have copies of Nature's Claim and Assassin's Trophy. But them having more than like one or two copies of those effects per game is going to be pretty rare.
they're gonna get one hit in here before I get the ghostly prison down, but that's like not too big of a deal because they only got the one blood gas. So we'll take a hit for two before we get to start prisoning them. Enter the battlefield tapped, scry one, deal. Uh, Leyline of Sanctity. I think I actually want Leyline of Sanctity because once I lock them out of attacking me, I want to be able to lock them out of conflagrating me to death. Is the ideal situation. I like how MTG bot turned bland gas into blood gas. God bless. That's some good. That's some good software right there. And if they don't have a nature's claim or a trophy in their hand, these prisons are going to lock them out very, very quickly. Uh, we're just getting started. We're in match one, game two right now. We are up a game here against Dredge. You know, I wasn't thinking about it, but it's possible I should have mulliganed my seven just because this is post board and I have a bunch of copies of Rest in Peace in my deck, which is a really high impact card in this matchup. Has Dredge always played fetches? There are some iterations of Dredge that play um, Gemstone Mines and City of Brass, but I believe the commonly accepted good versions of Dredge in today's format uh, play Fetchlands. Dizzy Drone, thank you for the 2 3 sub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me employed here. Quillman with a 14-month resubscription. Thanks for the over an entire year there. Welcome back. Good morning to everybody. Welcome, welcome. So we're going to hit for 5, down to 10 here. I guess we're kind of looking to draw a Sphere of Safety. It's like, all right, another Ghostly Prism is not, not the worst either. They're going to get to sit here and like life from the loam and stuff, but eventually they're going to punch through. I suppose I have these Phyrexian on life as well, though, to help keep us afloat. So they can attack me for three this turn if they'd like. <clears throat> uh, the creature over here is called Prized Amalgam. It's a 3-3 that comes back into the battlefield from the graveyard whenever any other creature enters the battlefield from my opponent's graveyard. So they're casting Loam here, sure. So that means they're just not attacking this turn. If they hit a Conflagrate, they actually haven't hit a Conflagrate yet, which is very good for me. Can we win if we draw both Form of the Dragons? Yeah. Yeah, you, uh, you discard the Form of the Dragons from your hand, and then you use uh, the card Misfail Planes to put it back into your deck. Uh, I don't believe Leyland Sanctity protects from Creeping Chill. This says uh, deals 3 damage to each opponent, so no, it does not. Uh, links links are enabled in chat. Just make sure they're relevant magic related links and not uh, not spam. So we get Leyline of Sanctity into play. So again, this is a prison deck. So you basically just want to be asking yourself the question like, all right, how does our opponent get out of the situation that we've currently put them into? Oh, geez. I guess if they flip all of their... Creeping chills here, I could die if they dredged into their last one. Probably need to play the Phyrexian on life next turn so that doesn't happen. How do I like the new Kaya? The new Kaya is weird. It's interesting. This is the first time we've seen a Planeswalker design that's, like, obviously intended to be a sideboard card. <clears throat> Correct. Yes, the ghostly, the ghostly prisons do stack up. 
Wait, did they flashback Faithless Looting and not Dredge? Do they not have another Creeping Chill in their deck? They might not have another Creeping Chill in their deck. Which would be, like, really good for me. No, I don't, I don't think, I don't think, uh, neither of those three mana, oh wait, do they have, do they have it? Am I getting creepy chills? We're down to five cards in their deck. Uh, that link is too long to work, Time Lord. Please, please Tiny URL or something like that. For, for long things like that, please and thank you. All right, so this makes four white. And then this kicks us up to six white, I believe. Yeah, sweet. So I can go uh, go sleep, another go sleep prison. And then actually, actually, I think I'm just going to go double on life here. So that way they can't like kill the on life and kill me next turn. Yeah, I really, I really like, um, I really liked it. I really like that they're exploring the three mana planeswalker space. Makes me, makes me really happy rather than just like churning out more five mana cookie cutter planeswalkers. Definitely greatly prefer the exploration that they're doing. It's a uh, forward slash unban Pythreon. All the, all the Twitch commands are forward slash. Yeah, I'm excited to see. I'm excited to see some blue-white tempo. <laughs> so I've been cheating on you with other streamers, and I must say that Hoglandia is light years more civilized than other chats. Yeah, a lot of other chats are just like unmoderated internet spaces. It takes it takes a lot of work to do to do what we do here. I read I read basically every message that's posted in my chat, and then remove remove things that uh, are unpleasant. That, that link also doesn't work, Time Lord. If you're uploading a picture, you should just use, um, what's it called? Uh, Im Imgur. Imgur is great. 404 means uh, link not found. So we really need to hit a sphere of safety here. So that way we can... Uh, we can lock them out of uh, attacking us all together. Let's play another ghost sleep, play another ley line, play another ghost sleep prison. Photo bucket. That's what I haven't heard in a long time, Anironix. That is, that is an oldie. Ugh. Photo bucket isn't free anymore. Oh, so they're they're now irrelevant is what you're saying. So they can only attack with one thing per turn because it costs them six mana to attack. We don't die if we have zero or zero or less life, and when we start taking infects. So our opponent has us dead in four attacks right now, which actually means that they don't have a way to destroy an enchantment. Our opponent actually can't kill us because there's only three cards left in their deck. Oh wait, no, they have us exactly dead, right? They attack us for three. No, and then they, they need five attacks, right? Because they need they attack for one. Are we using GeoCity websites? They're casting Faithless Looting. Really? Okay. They might, they might just be locked out here. This deck's by no means tier one that we're playing. The, uh, the Enduring Ideal deck. But it definitely has, like random matchups against some of the some of the good decks in modern and just like locks them out because ghostly pros is just such a messed up card just very very good well they have they have enchantment hate uh Jin, but they've dredged a lot of it so like there's there's one two uh there's two nature's claims in their bin and usually they only have somewhere between like two and four ways to destroy enchantments post board so they should they should just be done here at this point 
We're, we're just gonna deck them. There's one card left in their deck. You got it. Look at that. I'll even throw it up on screen here. What on God's green earth is this? Is this a, uh, what is it? What kind of, is this, is this a modern match? That's, uh, that's quite impressive. The old, the old flame jab plus a uh, thousand year storm. It's quite fantastic. All right. So they cast creeping chill, but I'm at like negative two now. So they need to have, they need to have two ways to destroy. If they have two ways to destroy enchantments in their hand, I am dead because they just get to destroy both of, they destroy both of my unlifes here and I die. So if they have, if they have two ways to destroy enchantments, we are dead here. All right, well that one puts me to two. I guess, I guess if they're both nature's claims, we don't die, huh? Because they're at zero cards in their deck now and they can't, they can't attack me for six. They have three ghostly prisons in play. What a funny game. If you have any small questions about specific Sublogar, I'm always happy to answer questions, especially if you're a sub, you can ping me on Discord asking about uh, specifics. Gabby Sparts has an article uh, pertained specifically to streaming magic online that was posted on the Wizards Mothership a couple of years ago that's still pretty relevant. I believe all the software she references in there is still current. The old literally see your entire deck concede. God, God bless us, everyone. Welcome, welcome to prison, baby. Should play like the Folsom Prison Blues. Welcome to a live one, Epic Game Time. Welcome to everybody at the uh, at 400 viewers already here, 9 a.m. in the morning. Started a little bit early today. Probably gonna run late if I'm feeling up to it. My back's like at like 95% capacity, so if I sit for too long, it gets a little bit twingy, but thankfully I've got my wonderful standing desk, so hopefully should be able to do eight, nine hours today, no problem. Make up for a little bit of lost time from yesterday. Gosh, this hand, I think I'm gonna keep this hand on the draw. I get uh, I get the Scry Land, and I have Lotus Bloom, Leyline of Sanctity, and the Enduring Ideal, and Porphyry Nodes too, if they're like really aggressive. So like Leyline of Sanctity and Porph Porphyry Node should like do things to help keep me alive in a couple different directions. Then I have the Lotus Bloom for the ideal. Morning C unit. So Urhwa, the reason why they play Nature's Claim rather than something like Natural State is because, um, what's it called? Is because they need to kill Leyline of the Void. Leyline, Leyline of the Void is the reason why they do that. All right, so my opponent mulliganed to three and then conceded, which makes me think they're either on Bogles, Dredge, or Tron. That's what, that's where my, my three, my three headspaces go. I think I'm gonna go ahead and just board in, rest in peace. I'm gonna trim these and board and rest in peace. Just in case they're a drudge again. Yeah, likely likely a non-interactive deck. And like I'll leave one ley line in. Obviously, we're not likely to have the ley line in our opener, but like we could have enduring ideal to fetch it up. I don't want to cut any of these because they could be bogles. I might keep this. That's super impressive, but I think it's fine. Dursty, thanks for the eight month resub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me employed here.
Remember that time we boarded in Rest in Peace in the Dark? God bless. Evan, thanks for the four month three sub. Thanks for the fun and educational four months. I appreciate the third of a year. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me employed here. All right, let's get our let's get our scry on looking for a rest in peace. Ghostly prison also looking like it's going to be good here. They discarded a bridge from below, so likely bridge bind. That is a deck that mulligans a lot. Yeah, the 4-4 Flying Trample Spectacle is, is likely going to be a format staple. Card seems very powerful. Especially just like curving one giant demon into another. Sounds quite fantastic. I'm going to hang tight on the Rune Tailo for now because I'm not 100% sure what I need to be naming just yet. I don't know, Time Lord. Those are, those are both like kind of weak elements. So they discarded Vengevine and Bloodgast. Okay, I think I'm gonna go ahead and Rune Tail of Vengevine here, or or we're just gonna cast Rest in Peace. That one, that one also works for me. Yay, Scrylands! Yay, Scrylands! All right, and they put two grave crawlers into play here, so I guess that means I'm going to Rune Tailo Grave Crawler. They have a Cathartic Reunion here or something. They're paying an additional cost. A oh, Walking Ballista, sure. Worth noting that. Rune Talo plus Porphyry Nodes isn't exactly a combo. Having a bunch of white enchantments here is pretty good though. Because I get to put a bunch of white colored mana sources into play so that way I can eventually ramp up with this Nykthos Shrine to Nyx into my Enduring Ideal. Happy New Year, the Blur. Welcome. It's good to be back. I was like, I was like feeling better at like two o'clock yesterday and i was like well i can't i didn't really want to fire up the stream for like an hour before the kids got home and i was kind of bored i was like oh this is sad my back's like 95 percent. my stomach's better though the reason the main reason i didn't stream yesterday was because my stomach was destroyed i think i got food poisoning for something we ate um What's it called? Tuesday night. Don't feel in feeling better today though, in terms of that. Oh, I could have cast the porphyry there too, right? Yeah, there probably wasn't a reason not to cast it as well, you're correct. Just get it into play. Alright, well we're we're 2040. Pretty pretty good start here. So, so far, Jin, we've just been prisoning people out of the game with enchantments, but casting the Sorcery Enduring Ideal is actually what we're looking to do, so that's, like, one of the reasons why we have the Besaidju.
That worm is a best of one design, Oprick. That worm, that worm is actually a best of one design. Modal cards like that. Actually, that's one of the one of the good things that will come from best of one being a format that they design with in mind is that cards that have modes like that will become more common because sideboards don't exist. Yeah, there's no there's no solemnity in this build, which is interesting. Definitely like a single copy of that, I think. I think just not quite good enough, right? Like it has Leyline and it has Enduring Ideal, but it just like doesn't have a way to ramp. It doesn't have any of our, our cheaper other interaction. So I don't think I can count on like Leyline Sanctity keeping me alive for a long time. Yeah, this hand's much better. It's got Ghostly Prison and Friction and Life in it. Of course the butler, happy birthday. So like, I don't, I, I don't think like, like, well, I don't think best of one is going to become the future of competitive magic by any means. Like some people are freaking out about best of one is going to be one of the things they design with in mind because it's a magic format now. And like, that's no different than the fact that like they design cards that are intended for, you know, EDH or cards for modern or legacy and not intended just for standard. I do actually still have the, my Harry's coat is still good. St still good Nim Nimzor, I believe. Bit.ly forward slash Google shave. I just kind of rotate through the the ones that I have in my, my banners down here. So some of the older ones I tend to rotate out. So that way there's not uh, not too much wear out on the, uh, on the banners that are up. Good night, Zoblin. Sure, but that that might change moving forward, Uprick. More more modal cards is something that we could see change moving forward. Yep, yeah, that's the one. This 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 works, that thing. Ah, yeah, there we go. There we go. The Harry's command still works. Thanks for the support. I appreciate it. Yeah, their their starter kit's really cheap. The reserves reserves are really good quality. Still using them to keep my keep my neck beard clear. I think there is probably a pretty good chance that both the planeswalkers they've spoiled are too slow and fair for modern. Modern's a really fast and brutal format. Uh, SI stands for Spanish Inquisition. So, we're hoping to find our way into an Enduring Ideal here at some point. We also would really like a, a Ley Line of Sanctity before this thing alts, so we can not die to that very quickly. I think the, I think the, what's it called? Dovin Band's definitely going to be standard playable. He's not like Liliana the Veil, but he's very reasonable. Put a chalice on zero, rude. So I don't want to play the dovescape because if I cast dovescape, I'm then not going to be able to cast uh, cast enduring ideal if I draw it. So they get to, they get to alt this Chandra next turn, which is a little bit scary. So we're taking four here, down to 10. Ruined Halo. Ruined Halo is actually like really bad here. Cause I can't, I can't name 
than the emblem. I have to leave, name like Legion War boss, which means I still get attacked by goblins. Yeah, I can't, I can't name Goblin. I can't name Chandra's Emblem because these aren't, these aren't Magic the Gathering cards. They are like token style effects. His Highness Stannis with the five month resubscription. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me employed here. Sandals, thank you for the three month resub. I appreciate the quarter of a year. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. So I guess I get hit with this here, but like now they can't attack me. And like I do still have this Phyrexian on light protecting me a little bit too. Form of the dragon. Form of the dragon actually likely means I win the game, right? They can't, they can't attack with this. My health total goes back to five, which paired with Phyrexian on life likely means they can't kill me. And this does five to my opponent every turn. Yeah, Dragon, Dragon on life is a combo for sure. FNC Sunshine with the brand new Prime support. And there's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch right now. Thanks for supporting mine this month with that. To be fair, I would have been able to cast the form of the dragon even without the Blood Moon because I have Rugged Prairie here. So I have red plus two red. All right, they did, they did get me to, they did deal five infect to me here. So if they can cast two more spells again next turn, I could be in trouble. I think I'm actually supposed to go ahead and shoot this Chandra to lock them out of casting two spells. Oh, that's such a good draw. We are so, nothing but professionalism here on this stream. Welcome to the prison, baby. Top three budget modern decks under $150. Uh, playable constructed modern decks don't really start at $150. You can build like budget L's for like 300 bucks, but modern's very expensive. Modern modern is very, very expensive in terms of Magic Gathering formats. If you want, if you want cheaper constructed decks, you don't really want to get into standard. Standard is a lot more affordable than modern tends to be. Yeah, two, two double hierarchs for 150 bucks, exactly. Uh, Chandra Emblem is not a May, right? Deal, this Emblem deals five damage to any target. Yeah. Yeah, Budget Storm is cheap-ish, but it's not, it's not $150 cheap. That's true too. I guess if you're talking about Magic Online, you could probably get some decks for under, under that. We all know, we all know who the real, real prison deck is here, don't we, chat? Welcome to Thunderdome. All right, Banishing Light and Oblivion Ring get in my deck. What does Word of Seizing do? Untap Target Permanent and gain control of it until end of turn. It gains haste. What a weird card. What a weird card. Assemble the Legion seems fine. Seems like a fun way to steal the game. That's not, I don't think that's quite true to Z Drone. Storm, a lot of Storm lists don't even play Scalding Charm. Like, and actually, I can actually just like reference this really quick. So, Storm. Here's a, here's a Storm list with no Scalding Charms at 5 out of League. It costs 300, $306 in paper. No, no Scalding Charms. Isn't, isn't data great? Isn't easily referenceable data great? It does take Planeswalkers and Ultimate then, that's true. Rune Taylor seems real bad here.
Porphyry notes also seems kind of mediocre. Data, are we talking about Star Trek? What's going on, Steam Plugger? Thanks for the 17 months. Welcome back. I appreciate the support. So our sideboard doesn't seem well set up for the Mono Red Prison matchup. This matchup also seems pretty reasonable for us. What mid-range slash control deck would you recommend in modern? Uh, green, black, rock for mid-range and Jeskai control for control. We played uh, Jeskai control fairly recently on stream with four Terminus in it, and it seemed quite fantastic. Yeah, uh, so this is definitely a matchup where I wish I had Solemnity in my, in my 75. We made a baby, Nexus Vix. Thanks for the nine month resub. Hey, appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Woof. That uh, that really makes me wish I had, uh, what's it called in my deck? Rune Talo. It's a pretty good one. I forgot they can get more aggressive post board. That's good. This could end up dumpstering us here. Wow, we are super dead. All right, we're gonna put uh, I'm gonna put what's it called back in our deck here in a hot second. The old, the old rune halo. Strong start from the opponent here. We're definitely the better prison deck in this matchup, so them them boarding into an aggressive stance makes a lot of sense. I mean, I might want poor free nodes and rune halo. Like nodes is pretty good at cleaning up idle on. But I must have to step out for a second. Hey, Beaks, thanks for the five month resub. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Thanks for keeping me employed here and shipping your Bezo Bucks back this way again this month. Yeah, well, we'll take a look at it here again in a second. Figure out what exactly I want to be doing. If it's doable to qualify for the MPL on arena only, will you try? I think it's pretty unlikely that you're gonna be able to qualify for the MPL based on just playing arena. I'd be I would be very surprised if qualifying for the MPL didn't involve playing in the Mythic Championships, which are previously known as Pro Tours. Uh, Magic Premier League. That's their what their top 32 players are with the streaming contracts and playing in the the big arena tournaments, which they've announced no details of. They like they like announced that the MPL was something that was happening and then like haven't published any information about it. So we just like actually don't know what's going on with it. I'm actually gonna go ahead and concede because we're pretty dead here. I'm in that? No. No, it was based on their top 32, their top 32 players from the Pro Tour. Which nowhere near includes me. I've uh, I've played in a grand total of of zero pro tours, because I uh, I play I play Magic I play Magic for a job. I don't play Magic to play tournaments. So I stream for a living. I don't uh, spend large amounts of money traveling to Magic tournaments where you hemorrhage more money. Oh, top Magic streamers. Yeah, if it was top Magic streamers, I'd definitely be in the top thirty-two. I'm like consistently in like the top top ten for most watched. That's okay. I'm gonna have some exciting news of my own that goes up on Saturday. That'll that'll shape some of the future of this channel. 
Yes, I'm a professional magic player. I'm just not a pro tour player. That's exactly. To be fair, nobody, nobody, uh, nobody is a pro tour player anymore. I just picked up a Harry's trial. My wife said my electric I always use sucks. Yeah, I have, uh, I use an electric to like go over the top, but then I use like an actual, you know, Harry's razor to get close, nice, nice close shave. Hey, Grim Tutin, thanks for the brand new Prime Sport. Oh, there's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch. Thanks for picking me to send that to this month. Do I get a preview card? No, nah, Wizards doesn't give me Wizards doesn't give me crap. Welcome back, Jeff. Hope you're feeling better towards this one. We'll do Swift. Thanks for the biddies. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. All of all of the top thirty-two players were um. All the top 32 players were offered a streaming contract that came with a $75,000 salary. And not all of them took streaming contracts, so they, they didn't tell us exactly how much they're paying them if they didn't take streaming contracts. But whatever the difference is between a non-streaming contract and a streaming contract was little enough that some people didn't take the streaming contract. So like players like William Jensen and uh, Owen Turkenwald, uh, Wyatt uh, McDarby, uh, Brian Brandu and Brad Nelson, all these players are going to be streaming at some point this year. I think, I think Owen Turkenwald said that they had to stream for like 400 hours total for the year, which is like eight hours a week or so, give or take. Yeah, it's like, it's like competition to a degree, Jim. I think there's a good chance that like a lot of those players are going to bring, bring their own viewers with them. I also think that like what I do on this channel is also a little bit different than like what a professional, professional player is going to is going to be doing well it's not just for eight hours a week so like their street the streaming part of their contract is for like eight hours a week but like they also have to like play in the mpl and who, who knows what do, who do what else i'm sure they have other other responsibilities outside of that yeah that's true too it's also funny to see people streaming arena who just like have obviously like like some of the people tweeted they're like well i'm in the mpl time to fire up arena for the first time and it's like oh this seems awkward Also, like, um, like a lot of a lot of people, especially people who play in like a lot of WotC events, like those players really love limited. So, like, they're not really like people who are streaming a bunch of limited, like, really aren't overlapping with things that I'm doing here. You do a lot more teaching than most streamers do, which is nice because I'm sort of trying to play. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. This is this is a really unique way to use my my teaching background. No, Dizzy Drone. I don't. I don't think that's true. I'd be. I'd be very surprised if that was the case. At least. Awesome. Yeah, I've tuned into some Owen stuff when he's done constructing in the past. I haven't caught him yet since he started back up again. Because he's mostly been doing been doing limited stuff. But if he does, if he does some constructed, I'm definitely gonna poke in. All right, cast this Oblivion Ring. Could have gotten at least one good paper out of what you're doing. That's funny. What's the best card I've ever signed? I had someone ask me to sign a uh, foil unhinged island one time. And I definitely like did the double take. And I was like, you know, this card's worth money, right? Like once I sign it, it's going to be MP. And they, they confirmed they wanted me to damage their expensive card, so I did it because they, they were sure, but it felt it felt weird. Like I'll I'll MP whatever you want me to MP, but you know. Just let just let you know. Alright, so Enduring Ideal is gonna start with Dovescape here to lock my opponent out of ever casting another spell. So the way Dovescape interacts with um, the epic spell is that epic spells don't don't cast don't cast the spells. Epic spells uh, place them on the stack, or you cut co you copy it. You don't cast it. So copy copying a spell is different from casting a spell. So Enduring Ideal's epic works through Dovescape. 
So now we just go ahead and get set up here. So they can't cast non-creature spells, which means they probably can never take this dubscape off the table. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab a... Uh, where is it? Where's the, the eight mana thing? Oh, the overwhelming splendor's in my hand. Awkward. All right, we'll just get form of the dragon then. So we'll grab, we'll grab form of the dragon here. Yeah, they're, con they're conceding. How much of an effect will this push have on the top players stream arena from wizards affect modern streaming? It seems like they're trying to push modern to the back burner. Well, I mean, modern's gonna get pushed to the back burner just by like the virtue of the virtue of like arena being popular and a modern not being supported on arena. So like in my sub poll, for instance, um, like 85% of my current subs said they were interested in seeing standard content and like, what was it? It was like almost 50% said my standard content was their favorite content that exists on this channel. By comparison, only like 25% said that modern was their favorite content that I make on this channel. So like, while I, while I don't ever intend to get rid of doing modern content altogether, like my refocus to doing, you know, two Magic Online leagues in the morning and then, you know, four or five, six hours of arena in the afternoon, that being done because that arena content's a lot more popular. We are, we are, no, we lost a game, right? Yeah, we lost, we lost a game. We lost it, we dropped game two against the, against the Mono Red Prison deck. If we ever meet for some reason, I'm gonna track down a place out of each hollow fountain printing for you to say. <laughs> That's great, Scouty. How long do I keep those polls open for? Uh, it's technically still open if you go check your email, but I've, I've got enough data at this point. Like the, the percentages on the poll that I sent out have been like the same from like 200 responses to like 500 responses. So I doubt the percentages are gonna change. I mean, I've always been pretty adamant that like Magic's good standard formats are the best formats Magic has to offer. It's just like, it's been a hot second since we've had a good standard format. Like when I was traveling to play a ton of Magic on the SDG tour, standard was my bread and butter. Like a lot of people know me for, for like Kiki Core, but like I've had a lot of good success with various standard brews over the years. Standard, standard is the format that's generally more friendly for brewing. There was there was a I watch Jeff for Jeff option to be fair Quarth. That was that was something I had put in. Hey, wanna be Beetle? Don't you know standard players vote early? That's why you can't trust exit polls. What's going on, Beetle? We actually don't have a stony silence in our 75, do we? Do we have any way to interact with an oblivion stone in this deck? It's exactly suppression field to slow it down and then oblivion ring to take it out of play. I'm just here for the eventual fancy crowd. You're getting close to be fair, Larynx. Oh, does, does this card stop? Can't activate activated abilities that aren't mana abilities or loyalty abilities. So Overwhelming Splendor turns off Oblivion Stone. Overwhelming, Overwhelming Splendor turns off Oblivion Stone. Uh, I've been taking a peek at the preview cards as we go. But like, as far as like, like uh, looking at spoilers now is more of a, oh, that's neat design as opposed to, oh, that's a playable card. Cause like, remember what makes a card playable hedges a lot on the context of the other cards that exist in the format. So like, it's hard to know what's good and bad without having a full picture. Phil Belmont, thanks for the two-month three-sub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. And Matt Mann, re-upping with the Twitch Prime for the 32nd month in a row. Thanks for keeping me around here. I do appreciate that. Now, I think it's pretty unlikely Modern ever comes to Arena. I do, however, we do know by next fall that we'll have a new non-rotating format on Arena. Vanderwile, thank you very much for the brand new Prime support. Welcome, welcome. We're dead here at this point, though, right? Like, I'm just, like, never beating this, uh, this Oblivion Stone. 
Eminem, thank you for the brand new tier one sub. Know there's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch. Thanks for supporting mine here. Keeping me around. Um, so poor free notes is pretty bad here. Rune Halo doesn't really accomplish anything either. Ghostly Prison also isn't very impressive. Uh, Banishing Light, Oblivion Root, Oblivion Ring, Blood Moon seems good. Word of Seizing, uh, Assemble the Legion also seem fine. Uh, Oromancy seems okay. Bring in Silence just as like a time walk. This match is probably really bad for us, but we're gonna give it the old college try here. There's been a few people that have tried various Thousand Year Storm decks in Standard. Uh, I've not played any on my stream personally, but they definitely exist out there. So I have uh, a couple of lands and a Lotus Bloom here, so definitely keeping this. Looking for a copy of our, our namesake and during Ideal ASAP. Uh, Word of Seizing borrows Planeswalkers. Uh, my number of browser source things I had on stream was causing some some stream lag on occasion. So I had to I had to axe the tip jar for the time being. It's the it's the least important of all the browser sources. Hey, corn chips! Thanks for the six month resub. I appreciate the half a year. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me employed here. Have some mountains, friendo. Sweet. I get to oblivion ring that. One Oblivion Stone. Send the Oblivion Stone into Oblivion. I feel like that's kind of a flavor win, right? Send the Oblivion Stone into Oblivion. I like the Oblivion Stone, so I put a ring on it. That's a great one. At what subscriber number did you feel I could jump and turn streaming into my job? Well... So to give to give context into my into my personal life, uh, full time daycare for two two children in the Midwestern United States where I live costs approximately two thousand dollars per month. So my subscriber count needed to be able to sustain the cost of that plus some actual income. So I wasn't just streaming to pay for daycare. So what what number something allows it to be a job for for each individual person is probably going to differ based on based on what your living costs are. We also don't have to worry too much about a nature's claim here since I have the greater oromancy in play here. The problem is at this point they're going to be able to just like cast Karn for 7 mana. No, Christie's Christie's job has has insurance on it. Getting getting insurance as someone who's self-employed in the United States is like really miserable. The amount of money that you have to pay for it is extremely extremely bad. Yeah, yeah, there's there's a reason why I was a stay-at-home dad for a long time, Cheesy Pie Gaming. In Quebec it costs $8 a day. Yep, in the in the United States, um it is about $2,000 a month for two kids. Assemble does beat Warm Coil Engine. You're not wrong. If they have a Karn here, however, we could be in trouble. I like how our board does this dance while they while they attack us. All right, my body is ready to lose to Ugin next turn. Who's who's ready to lose to Ugin? He's got two thumbs and is ready to die to Ugin. This guy right here.
Yeah, don't have kids. And that's that's just the price of daycare, right? Like that doesn't that doesn't cover the cost of like, you know, pull ups or diapers when they're younger, food, toys, all sorts of stuff. All right, so we're dead. Got it. Good stuff. I almost conceded the match, but I wanted to see if we had a chance here. I guess if I would have found my way into the overwhelming splendor, we probably would have been okay here. Yeah, and all your all your vacation days belong to them because you can't you can't send your kids to daycare if they're sick. Condoms are cheap, chat. That's all I'm, that's all I'm saying. Condoms are cheap. How are we doing, folks? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning. My name is Jeff Hoglin. I'm a full-time streamer and content producer here on Twitch. I'm here playing Magic 30, 40, 50 hours a week. Well, I love what I do here, and I'm grateful to do this as a job, I wouldn't be able to be here day in and day out without my wonderful subs. If you uh, enjoy my content, please consider subscribing to keep me here full-time. Past subscribing, you can also support my stuff by checking out some of my very wonderful sponsors. MTGOTraders.com will love to buy and sell some Magic Online cards with you. And if you use the code Hoagland PayPal at checkout with them, you'll save 8% on your singles orders there with them. Neo creates wonderful candy flavored protein bars using code Hoagland at bit.ly forward slash Google bar. You can save 10% on all of your orders there with them. Hurley Burley Studios does wonderful professional quality Magic the Gathering altars using code uh, Jeff10 at hurleyburleystudio.com. You can save 10% on all of your orders there with them. And of course, these cards are protected by none other than my BCW Elite Guard sleeves. Want to keep my altars nice and safe using code Jeff10 at bcwsupplies.com. You can save 10% on sleeves, binders, deck box, and all sorts of other great gaming accessories there with them. Don't say this stuff. I just got the good news from my... I mean, kids are great. Declan's, like, hilarious, and I wouldn't trade them for anything in the world, but, like, I'm just... I'm just a realist about all things. Kids... Kids, uh... Kids change your life in a way nothing else ever could. It's, like, wonderful and terrifying at the same time. Yeah, yeah. So like these these altars, for instance, are what are referred to as just border extensions. So this is the actual original artwork on here, and she just extends the artwork over the borders. So in in general, these are tournament legal, but the head judge has any final say as always. Hey, Cardinal, thanks for the two month resub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me employed here. Uh, I went. Is this the same person we played against earlier? Is not different, different, different mono red prison. And like, how funny is this, right? Just like, you know, modern's got 60 decks in it, 100 decks, however many decks. And like, we play against mono red prison two times in five matches. Do I have any deck lists for AOS champions? I just started and I like the death alliance. I do actually. The, uh, the deck I've been, I've been laddering with in AOS champions is a... Uh, what's it called? Is a death deck actually? It's a mordant quick quick quest deck. That's my that's the Warhammer deck I've been playing. I had a link candy in my Discord. And their deck importing setup is really slick. You can just like auto import the deck from that website. It's great. I was watching my friend play Modern yesterday in one league yet. Is it Phoenix four times? Woof. Is the Champions game free to play friendly? It is actually. I actually, I actually have, I actually, I don't, I don't play it that much. Like I play probably, I play like two hours a day, like, I don't know, three or four days a week at most. I mostly play while I'm at the gym, like in between reps and while I'm on the treadmill. And when the second set came out, I actually have more currency than I know what to do with at the moment. I think 8-Wack or Merfolk would be better to look at or getting. I think from a pure power level standpoint, that 8 Wack's probably the better deck. Uh, the opponent named Arid Mesa, which is probably a fine name, although a little weird if they're going to follow up with Blood Moon. Ah, the old Mutavolt Blood Moon deck. Got it.
We actually played a eight whack deck with a small green splash on stream at some point recently, and it felt really good. You can find that on my YouTube channel. Durax, thank you for the 713 sub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me employed here. Can Rune Tailo named Basic Mountain? Sure, that's a magic card. I did Black Green Elves do at the SCG event. So the SCG tournament that I played in was a split format tournament. And I went three and one in the modern portion with Elves, but I only went one and three in the standard portion with Pirates. So I did not get to day two. I think Elves is great though. I played a ton of Elves. I top forward a hundred player local tournament with the deck. We played a ton of it on Magic Online. And find lots of articles and videos of it on my website and my uh, Cool Stuff Inc. website. Cool Stuff Inc. articles. And Green Black Elves is a great choice if you're looking for an aggressive, a good aggressive deck. So the problem here is that I can't Rune Talo Dragon Token. But that being said, they also have this Ensnaring Bridge in play now. So like they can't attack me with the dragons until they get five cards in their hand. Why do they play Sarkin? Uh, they play Sarkin just for the rummage effect. Let's them. Their, their deck has a lot of dead cards in it, like redundant spyglasses and stuff like that. So they play Sarkin purely to like try and find the right cards in their deck that otherwise lacks some card selection. Form of the Dragon. I just like play form of the dragon, right? Cause like I have the ley line of sanctity in place. So they really can't punish me for being going down to five here. I don't think. Yeah, arena, arena is really good. Are, arena is good in a way I never thought digital magic could be good. So by the time they have enough cards in their hand to attack me with the Sarkin Dragons, they're going to be dead for my form of the dragon. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, blast them four times. Yeah, there's uh, Sorcerer's Byglass, just a dead card against this time. So they need, they need, they needed a braid here. I guess they could have a braid in their deck. If they have if they have an abrade here, I'm gonna feel really silly. Maybe maybe I should have given Sarkin a love tap just to like play around in a braid. Huh, they must not must not have any. All right, so we actually just played this matchup. So I'm going to bring in the Banishing Lights and the Oblivion Rings. I'm going to cut these Suppression Fields. I'm going to grab the Word of Seizing here too so I can steal their Planeswalkers and ultimate them. Seems fine. So we are 3-1 uh, and one in this league with our uh, Enduring Ideal deck. No, you can only only name actual magic cards, Larynx, not tokens. As someone who doesn't win tournaments, Angel, I don't have to worry about answering questions like that. The board states this deck wins with are just poetry. They really are, aren't they? This hand's fantastic. 
Got uh, got a ley line. We've got a ghostly prison to stunt any attackers they're going to deploy. And we've got uh, Lotus Bloom to suspend early as well. Yeah, maybe, maybe Assemble the Legion would be fine. If you had a choice between Blue Black Shadow, Grixis Control, and Ad Nauseam Tendrils to play in Legacy, what would I choose? Probably Grixis Control. Because Grixis, Grixis Control plays all the busted blue cards. Uh, this is Match 5, Game 2. Uh, Pact SI is Pact Spanish Inquisition, which is a legacy combo deck that aims to win on the first turn of the game. It's quite it's quite hilarious if you haven't seen it before. Even even if you're not if if you if you are interested in seeing what some of the most busted combinations of cards can do in Magic's oldest one of Magic's oldest formats, you're definitely going to want to hang out for the Spanish Inquisition. In fact, I intentionally put. SI before standard rather than at the start of the stream because I wanted people to be able to check it out. So unfortunately we are we are obligated to cast this, which means we take two and then this dies. Do I play Arena? Yeah, 100% of the standard that we play on this channel is played on Magic Arena. So we'll be we'll be playing standard after after Spanish Inquisition today. So my schedule is approximately five days a week, Monday through Friday. I do uh, one to two Magic Online leagues in the morning, starting about uh, 8.30, 9 o'clock Central Standard Time. And then we pivot to Arena for five or six hours after that. You have a hazard that can attack. Congrats. Deals two damage to each opponent. So Hazaret does deal damage to me through through Leyline of Sanctity is good to note. Yep, my schedule, it's also good to note, my schedule is also on my website for those who are new to my content. My schedule includes not only what days I'm streaming, but also what formats I'm streaming on those days. Try to be very organized around here. This is my job, and I treat it as such. Well, I mean, Hazard plus and Staring Bridge kind of is a combo. Because, like, this can deal damage through Bridge. I mean, payouts compared to Magic Online are kind of... It's kind of silly to compare any Arena payouts to Magic Online, in my opinion, because the Magic Online economy is just completely different. A closed economy versus an open economy is like night and day. Actually, I was kind of surprised they didn't spell Skite the Banishing Light and the Eidolon, but, you know, teach their own. With the, uh, with the Phyrexian on life in play, they don't kill us with this Hazard for 12 turns, so hopefully we'll find a way to beat them before then. Oh, jeez, and they hit the fourth land here, so they can actually start attacking with this. Woof. The good news is, if I draw Enduring Ideal, we can cast it. Rune Halo. Rune Halo. Don't mind if it does. That one. I would, I would like protection from that one. Always use protection, chat. Daycare is very expensive. Holy gosh! Porphyry nodes with their Hazaret is a combo. 
because this destroys this, but then it can't destroy this. So my Porphyry node never leaves play. So as someone who once upon a time was very much in favor of an open economy like Magic Online offers, as someone who's older and I'd like to think a little bit wiser at this point, I actually greatly prefer the closed ecosystem that Arena offers. And the reason for this change of heart is that not having to play mini games to play the game that I actually care about is preferred to me where I'm at in my life. So like for instance, you know, let's say there's a breakout deck at a Magic Pro Tour. So all of a sudden I like didn't buy cards for the deck that were in the breakout deck. And now if I want to play the breakout deck, it now suddenly costs me four times as much as it did before it broke out at the Pro Tour. Whereas like on a system like Arena, my mythics always cost one mythic wild card, right? Like Angrath's a great example of that now, right? Like in paper, Angrath has recently spiked up to $20, whereas on Arena, it's still just one mythic wild card. What Angrath costs today is the same as what he cost two months ago and what he's gonna cost three months from now. How much does it cost to buy into Arena and have two to three playable decks? It depends on which decks you're building. So the cost of decks in Arena is related to the number of rares and mythics that they have in them. I have no idea why they altered Chandra. They can at the very least shoot their Hazret over and over again. Yeah, it depends. It depends on how much overlap there's going to be between your decks too. So like, for instance, if you want to build like blue-black control and blue-black pirates, those share a lot of mana base slot. So it's going to be cheaper to get an additional one. Yeah, you can build a deck like mono blue for 20 bucks. I've heard most people say for like $100, you can get most things on arena for like a single deck. And like what your second deck costs past that varies on like what you open and what that deck is. So we haven't found a form of the dragon. We haven't found a, we haven't found an enduring ideal yet, but like they're nowhere close to killing us. So we've got that going on. Yeah, I agree with that too, Grim. The fact that like, I have to like use these treasure chest things on Magic Online is also extremely tedious. And like the fact that the Magic Online economy can be somewhat volatile and mean that how much my treasure chests are worth can vary drastically week to week. Also makes the prizes that I'm earning less consistent. We do not place our field of Nyx. All right, down to negative one here, which means I'm dead in five more turns to this Chandra. So mythics in arena actually are more difficult to acquire than rares. The problem is you don't you don't realize how many rares your mana bases take up basically is what it comes down to. So like once you have your rare mana bases built, so like using myself as an example, um in Magic Arena, I currently have two mythic wild cards and I have 50 rare wild cards because it's that much easier for me to acquire rares than mythic once you have your mana bases flushed out. Would I recommend the list on my website for this deck? I would. So we hit, we hit the 4-1 with Enduring Ideal here. This list is a little bit different than the one that's on my website, but honestly, the games we played there, um, didn't really feel like any of the changes that we made from the list on my site were really meaningful. So like the list on my site has a small, a small blue splash in it for a couple of utility enchantments, whereas this has a small red splash for utility enchantment. I guess we did have a match that we won where we cast Form of the Dragon for mana because our lands could produce red. Whereas if we weren't playing red, we wouldn't have been able to cast it there. So like maybe maybe that's worth considering because we did have a game that we won by just casting Form of the Dragon. But I think that game we also were under a Blood Moon, so we would have been able to cast it in the other one as well.
But if you're looking for kind of a neat, wacky prison deck, this archetype in general is something we've played a number of times on stream in the past. It's one of many, many sweet decks you can find you can find on my website. This one is in the meme category, I believe. So it's kind of kind of weird. Um, the porphyry nodes were interesting. We actually didn't play any matchups where the porphyry nodes were good, but I kind of like the idea of four nodes. This card's really good against aggressive decks in the format. All right, onward, onward, upward, backward, forward.